millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. And today we're talking smart millennial money moves to make. Whatever you're saving up for, a CD from Sandy Spring Bank lets you grow your savings at a guaranteed rate. Right now, earn interest at 4.5% APY on an 8-month CD special or 4.25% APY on a 14-month CD special. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com slash CD specials. Minimum opening deposit to earn the annual percentage yield is $500 for the 8-month CD special and $2,500 for the 14-month CD special. Member FDIC meal prepping and cooking. And remember, shipping's always free. Oh boy, this podcast episode promises to be a doozy jam-packed with a lot of different tips. If you are still a little stuffed from Thanksgiving, I highly suggest that you put on your comfiest clothes, grab one of your favorite beverages, maybe make yourself a little turkey sandwich with some of the leftovers, and hunker down for a few minutes as we as we plow through this episode of some of the smart millennial moves to make. But before we get there, we have to highlight our friend of the week. And this week we have Rose who wrote in a great question. She said, I now understand my 401k fees thanks to your episode, but I have no idea how to invest my 401k. Right now I'm in a target date fund because I think I understand how it works, but honestly, I'm a bit befuddled. Any tips? Rose, you're not alone. I would say that the majority of the population is definitely befuddled when it comes to making 401k selections. And the problem is, is that there isn't, you know, like one fund that is the quote unquote right fund, right? It is such an individualized decision of what you invest in that, you know, there's a lot of different factors I think you should think about, but, you know, target date funds are good. They're, they're very popular for sure. They're not all created equal. So a couple of things you need to look at are, you know, what is your fund's historic returns? What is the expense ratio, AKA how much is this fund costing you? 
And target date funds, they're really, they're, they base their mix on your age and your anticipated retirement date, right? So the further away you are for retirement, normally the riskier they are. They're in more risky type funds. And then they move to more conservative type funds the closer you are to retirement. So target date funds are, are a kind of popular like set it and forget it type fund. But I would say, you know, if 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 you um, are looking to branch out from there, you know, there's another few things to think about. Obviously, how old you are, how risky you want to be, and then what are the choices in your 401k uh, portfolio that you can select from? You know, uh, if you read any investing article, they'll all all the experts will kind of point to the optimum uh, split between stocks and bonds depending on your on your age. And most people in their 20s and 30s are somewhere in a 90-10 or 80-20 split from stocks to bonds, obviously stocks being more heavily weighted. Because you're younger and you have more time, you could be a little bit more aggressive. But again, that's just an average. Uh, one of the best tips I have, we've had them on the podcast many times, is a company called Bloom with three O's. They're in the show notes. For a very small fee every month, they help you get the best position for your 401k based on your needs and based on the available funds in you know your, your company's portfolio. It's way cheaper than hiring a financial planner to help you with this, and they devote 100% of their time you know, to helping you find the best mix. And I can really like personally attest that they have some of the best customer service out there. So Rose, like seriously, high fives to you for attempting to, you know, get knowledgeable about your 401k. I just encourage you to to keep reading, uh, keep looking up those different funds and really figure out, you know, how risky you want to be. That's going to definitely help you select which funds to put in your portfolio. So that just kind of rolls us right on into the smart millennial moves to make. And Really, I'm just going to talk about like kind of three high level moves, and under those are a whole lot of different uh, moving parts, if you will. So, number one is is thinking outside of the box, and you know, I think the savviest um, financial people do this really well, right? And and it's it's thinking about different things where you know maybe you can save and invest all at the same time. So I talk a lot about saving an emergency fund, you know, and having three to six months worth of your expenses saved so that, you know, if there is some sort of crazy emergency that comes up, you have cash, you don't have to go to your credit cards. But if we take this a little bit further and we think outside of the box, you know, a a good idea, what if you invested in a Roth IRA? Remember, the Roth is different from your 401k and a normal IRA because in those types of investment vehicles, the money you put in, there is a tax deduction going in, but then when you take the money out when you retire, you're going to end up paying tax based on your current tax rate. Well, the Roth is a completely different animal. The money that you put into the Roth, currently you can put in up to $5,500 into a Roth is already taxed. You've already paid tax on that money. So then when you retire, you take the money out without any tax, right? And so the cool thing about a Roth is that you could be saving for your emergency fund and investing all at the same time. How that works is because the money that you contribute into the Roth, you can take out without a penalty, However, um, you cannot take out the gains without a penalty, right? See how that works? So, you know, you could potentially be saving money and trying to invest and grow that money. So you kind of get a double whammy approach there, right? And then you again, you can use your own contributions as a piece of your emergency fund. And remember, the goal is to save somewhere around 20% of your take-home pay every month. Now, that can count all sorts of things. That can count your contributions to your emergency fund. It can count your contributions to your 401k and your IRA. It even counts your employer's matching contributions. So don't freak out about you know that 20%. Just start somewhere and then put it on auto debit so you don't have to even think about it, right? 
Another thing to think about if we're, if we're talking about in investing is figure out what your risk tolerance is, right? That is how risky you want to be. And again, just like the advice I gave to Rose, you know, that will help you shape what you're going to end up investing in. It doesn't pick the particular investments for you, but it helps you narrow down the particular choices. Uh, just like Bloom is awesome for a 401k, there's companies like Wealthfront and Betterment that are great if you want to set up an IRA or you want to set up a Roth, and they can help you select a portfolio to meet your investing needs for, again, a very small fee. Uh, way cheaper than hiring an investment professional to help you out with that, Um and they're just great resources, especially if you're kind of just lost and not sure of what to invest in. So I'm going to have all these links in the show notes, so don't worry, you don't have to freak out and remember all of these names. So number two, I call it CYA, and you know what it stands for. It's cover your, you know, your ass, your behind, right? And we forget this a lot of times when we're talking about money moves, because normally we're talking about budgeting and saving and um, investing, you know, all of these things that feel really like commonplace to us, but not a lot of time is spent on, you know, covering the risks that actually exist. So you could be the best saver in the whole entire world, and then something ends up disrupting in your life, and then all that money is gone, Right. So, you know, we kind of have to like balance that all out. So we make sure that you are covered for any risk exposure that might come up. Because again, it's a great way to lose what we already got, which is not what I want to happen to you. And there's, uh, there's a lot of different risks to think about, you know, one is, is a disability. And I know a lot of us like really poo poo, like I'm not going to be disabled. There's nothing that is going to happen to me, but I hate to tell you. There's a much greater risk of losing your ability to earn an income, aka having a disability, than death in your 20s and 30s, right? There is a way bigger chance of having something happen to you where you're still alive, you're still, you know, operating in life, but you can't go to work. And if you think about it, if you can't earn your paycheck, how in the world are you going to pay for all of the things that you like to do in life, right? You still have to function as a person. And so disability becomes like a really real risk for a lot of people. And, you know, a lot of times it's it's a corporate benefit. They may offer long-term disability, not short-term, right? They're two very different animals. So long-term disability, again, is, is the, is the, the type of insurance that is going to help protect you if you are disabled for a long period of time. Obviously, that makes sense, right? Um, but again, it's something that we don't we don't think about a lot. We don't think that that could happen, but it can. You can also buy a disability insurance policy outside of work. Um, you know, there are there are lots of great companies where you can shop online and figure out how much this would cost you. But you know, it's definitely a risk that you need to think about protecting against because. Your ability to earn that paycheck is everything to you, right? Your biggest asset is not your house or your car or your shoe collection uh, or any of that, you know, your wine collection, any of that cool stuff. That's not your greatest asset. A lot of times you can't even sell that stuff for real cash. Your greatest asset is that you can bring a paycheck in every single month, right? So we've got disability, we've got to talk about its cousin, which isn't a great topic either, but that's death and life insurance. And I've done a couple podcasts in the past a few months about life insurance and how to figure out how much you actually need. So go back and, and check those out. But you know, when you're thinking about life insurance, I always tell people, don't just think about like, okay, I just want to have enough life insurance like to pay off my house or, you know, if I have a small child just to send them to college. If you're married, you also want to think about the other person there. You know, they have expenses where they're going to need extra cash for a long period of time. So When you're thinking about life insurance, think about, you know, how can we get life insurance so that we could invest the principal, you know, and the other surviving person can live off the interest for a really long period of time. 
Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T-O-S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. One of the best ways to think about, think about life insurance 
The next is is losing your job. And, uh, you know, this is a really real scenario for a lot of listeners. I've had a lot of questions about, you know, what do you do when you've, when you've got laid off from like a really high level job? And it, it's just not that easy to just go find another, you know, $100,000 paycheck. It just, in today's world, it just, there's a lot of competition. And this is really where it's so important to have that cushion saved for it least a couple of months where you don't have to freak out about, you know, paying your bills. You're still going to freak out because <laughs> losing your job's never a fun thing. You know, hopefully you're going to get some sort of severance package, but having at least a couple of months there pad that can help, you know, carry over from your severance is just going to make you feel, you know, way better. I mean, if, if you don't get six months of severance, you know, having those two or three extra months there, It could mean really the difference between going in debt for a lot of people or bankruptcy or all of those negative things and, you know, being able to carry on with your life. Now, you may have to, you know, cut things out. That's normal. But, you know, you're, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna lose everything. Right. And then also just like, you know, things that people don't think about that actually has like a monetary value of networking and making contacts. I mean, I can tell you that Every single opportunity that I have received in probably the past 10 years, at least, has been through a contact. You know, someone that I made friends with, someone that maybe I helped them out with way down the line, and now they're in a position and they can help me out. All of those things, they have a value to them. And definitely don't underestimate you know, not burning bridges and and staying friends with people and helping people out because he really does like what goes around comes around is not a false statement. (laughs) I've seen it work in the good ways and I've seen it work in the not so good ways with people. So, you know, if you're in a situation where you're fearing that you're going to get laid off, not only, you know, cutting back on your expenses and saving any amount of cash that you can, but also reaching out to people as quickly as you can so that you can get in their sphere of like, hey, I need a job. I'm looking for a job. All right. So another uh, CYA moment is natural disasters. And in the U.S. this year, we've had a ton of them, uh, floods, just, you know, (laughs) wildfires, you name it. So if there's a natural disaster that happens to your house or your apartment, you know, you really want to make sure that your, your homeowner's insurance that you have properly covers your losses. Especially if you bought your home a few years ago, you just want to really make sure that that's all up to date. And if you rent and you don't have renter's insurance, I would be calling up your whoever does your car insurance and getting a quote for renter's insurance uh, because anything can happen to your apartment and certainly you probably have, just like me, a ton of stuff in the apartment, a ton of electronics. And if all of that was lost, it would be a huge amount of money for you to replace. And renter's insurance is so cheap. It is so cheap. So it's definitely worth getting a quote and finding out you know, whether your budget can handle adding that in. Another risk is getting sued in a car accident. And you might not live in a place that is as sue happy as California is, but I swear it's like you could just like brush past somebody and they decide to sue you. (laughs) So regardless of where you live, I've talked about this on a podcast previously, but an umbrella policy, again, is something that not a lot of people talk about, not a lot of people know about, but it's literally just as it sounds. It's literally an umbrella that sits over your car insurance because a lot of times car insurance, you know, we're trying to get the cheapest policy possible and our limits are not such that if we got in an accident and we injured somebody, they probably wouldn't cover very much. And that's a real threat to a lot of people. You know, don't just go with the cheapest car insurance. Make sure that you have limits that are going to keep your bank account safe, as safe as humanly possible. But this umbrella policy, it goes over that, right? So whatever your car insurance doesn't provide, the umbrella policy will pick up. Well, That's a really big deal. If you are in a car accident and you injure somebody and they sue you for a couple million bucks, I hate to break it to you, but your car insurance is not going to cover that. 
And somehow you're going to have to come up with that cash. And I can think of a lot of different ways to come up with that cash and none of them are good ways. So this umbrella policy, it's cheap. Again, it's really inexpensive to get an umbrella policy that's going to help kind of step in. Okay. And last is, you know, health insurance. Um, you know, if you, if you have a health issue that comes up, you know, most of us are healthy, right? We go to the doctor maybe for like our annual physical, uh, girls go to the doctor for our annual visit. Um, but you know, usually we don't have much that we go to doctor to, you know, we might get sick, we might need to go to, you know, prompt care or something like that. But you know, it's just, it's not a big deal. And we pay our health insurance premiums every month. And we kind of crab about playing those, those health insurance premiums. But if there's a health issue, like a serious health issue that comes up with you, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to think about. So have you saved enough money to cover the deductible on your health insurance plan? For a lot of us, the answer is no. (laughs) Um, I can remember a year where the answer was no for me. And I just had this like crazy repetitive streak with kidney stones. And it was, it was awful. I felt like I was in the hospital like every other month with a kidney stone. Um, so much so that I actually got written up in a medical journal for passing one of the very largest kidney stones. I can't believe I'm even sharing this with you, but nonetheless, you know, I had to come out of pocket to meet my deductible and it was a lot of cash. So you just want to make sure that you have some sort of backup plan, or at least that you're saving towards that. It's just, it's just not a bad thing to have like a separate savings account called, you know, CYA. And and in there is some money to take care of a lot of these different things. Um, You know, then we talk about like more kind of advanced things about having a will and an advanced healthcare directive. Uh, I know I've done a podcast a couple months ago featuring an app called Tomorrow, a great a great app that helps you create these documents for free, for free. Um, I would highly, highly, highly suggest it. Uh, I kept looking at this app going like, what is the catch? What is the catch? I don't get it. What is the catch? And I was like, there isn't a catch, you know? You may want to have an attorney review these documents, but I've had documents procured from that app and... They are very valid documents to cover all of these needs. So again, I would definitely check that out. All right, so that brings us around to number three. And this is, you know, the concept of building yourself a roadmap. Because remember, like money isn't one size fits all. It's it's very different and it's going to look very different based on what the heck you want your life to look like. And we're going to start out with ditching our debt. You know, there's there's two ways to ditch our debt. And our debt needs a strategy. If we're just like aimlessly uh, paying money to our credit cards and we're wondering like, why is nothing happening? It's because you don't have a strategy, right? So there's two different ways. There's the way of lowest balance, which is finding the lowest balance that you owe and attacking that debt first, right? The second way is the highest interest rate. So finding the highest interest rate you have and attacking that one first. There's all sorts of calculators. Nerd Wallet's got a great one that helps you build a debt payoff plan, and you can actually see how much interest you're going to save. It's really powerful. But what you're doing with one of these strategies is you're saying, okay, I'm going to pay all of my minimum payments on the other cards, the other debts I have, and I'm going to throw as much cash as I can on the one I'm tacking first. Once I got that guy paid off, then I'm going to take all all of that payment, I'm going to roll it on the next debt, right? So you're creating like a snowball effect and you're knocking out debts right and left. It's a great way to to really motivate yourself to stay on the path to paying off debt. You know, paying off debt is going to build your credit score. So one of the biggest factors of your credit score is the amount you owe versus the amount of available credit you have. The wider that margin is, the better your credit score is going to be. So starting to get a strategy where you're paying off the debt is going to widen that margin, is going to help boost your credit score. So we got credit cards, you know? Are your credit cards working for your lifestyle? Are they 
are they giving you some love back? Are they giving you some points? Are they giving you some cash back? Are they helping you with um, airline miles? Like, what are they doing for you, right? If they're not doing anything for you, then it's time to take a look at them and say, you know, is there a smarter way I should be I should be doing my my credit cards? You know, the the hard thing is is all of those great cards with points and rewards. If you owe money on those then they're not able to, you know, kind of work their magic, right? Sure, you're still earning points and all of those good things, but you're also paying a lot in interest. So most of those cards have a really high interest rate. So if you have debt on those cards, can you roll them over to another card with a 0% interest offer for, you know, now they've got them like 15 months. I've saw one for 21 months a couple, couple weeks ago. That can be powerful because then you're saving all of that money on interest and you're not paying it on your, you know, your rewards card, right? So just something to think about, food for thought, you know, are your credit cards working for your lifestyle and the things that you like to do in life? So then we got to talk about being a, a goal getter and, you know, I sometimes usually start with goals, but, you know, we're going to kind of finish or not finish, but towards the tail end here talking about goals. And again, this sounds really basic, but you know, what are your short-term goals? What are those things that you're working towards? And what are your long-term goals? If you think they don't matter, I urge you to think again, because creating a monthly goal list and a yearly goal list is one way that you can see where you're going. Am I on track? Am I not on track? You know, what adjustments do we need to make? Because a lot of us just get really complacent when it comes to money. You know, we, we get our paycheck, we pay our bills, we kind of go month after month after month and like nothing's happening, our debt's not getting paid down, we're not saving money, we're not getting closer to our goals and then we start getting frustrated with life and it's exhausting, is it not? So goals, it's not It's not like, okay, if I make a goal, it's like I'm going to achieve all this stuff. That's not the way it works. But it's a visual reminder of the direction you're going in. And speaking about savings, you know, we're we're towards the end of the year. We're going to roll into a new year. It's a great time to start thinking about a savings challenge. If you've never done one of these, it's actually really fun. So what I do is um, I pick a number to start. And you can you can start this anytime, right? You can pick any random day to start this. I usually start at the beginning of the year. And each week I increase my savings by five bucks a week. So for instance, I kind of challenge myself to go all out here. So I start at $20 a week, January 1 for 26 weeks. That's half the year. And then we use that cash to go on a trip somewhere. So we literally just go week one, 20 bucks and then 25 and then 30 and 35 and 40 and 45 and 50. And blah, blah, you know, we keep adding up to 26 weeks And at the end of 26 weeks, we will have saved somewhere around $2,100. And it doesn't feel like a struggle. It feels like a challenge. It feels like something where, you know, I want to keep working to like up the ante. And what ends up happening is we usually end up saving a lot more money because we're kind of like, oh, well, we've got an extra five bucks here, extra 10 bucks here, extra 20 bucks. So we kind of end up just like, you know, shoving as much cash as we can into the saving challenge. And that's always the fun part. Like at the end, then um, I'm like, oh, how much do we actually have? So this year when we did it, we had well over $3,000 in there. So, you know, we're, we're a little competitive. <laughs> and You know, when you can save more, up your percentage at work in your 401k, save more in your Roth, save more in your high yield savings account. You know, there's, there's apps like raise that we just had on the podcast. So many more out there bloom to help you, you know, best position your 401k acorns to help you invest your spare change. There's so many tools out there to help you with saving money and growing your money that it's at least worth looking at those. You know, take a look at it, figure out which ones you like, give them a try. So this brings us all back around to what is your money system each month? And you need a money system. You need some sort of system. And I find when I get off track with the system, everything goes a bit haywire. And when I'm really good at the system and it doesn't take me that much time every month, things are really going 
smoothly. Like we're saving money, we're cutting out expenses, we're tracking towards our goals, like everything seems to be flowing. So the point of the story is I'm just like you. (laughs) I fall off track sometimes. I forget the system sometimes. I get lazy sometimes. I get frustrated sometimes. All of those things. But when you have a money system and you stick to it, I can guarantee you it helps so much. So, you know, are you using paper or an Excel or an app for a budget? You know, there's great ones. You need a budget, clarity money. All of these tools are going to help you so much be able to budget your money each and every month. You know, when are your money meetups, either with yourself or if you're married or if you're dating somebody, you know, what is that like 10 minutes a week where you're going to schedule time, where you're going to look over your finances for the week, look over maybe if anything crazy came up, what's coming ahead for the next week, and then how are you tracking towards your goals? It doesn't take a long time. It doesn't have to be stressful or frustrating or anything like that. But again, it's just about like pointing yourself back in the right direction. Where's your money hub? Where's the place where you're going to keep all of your important financial documents, right? It could be a fireproof safe. It could be, um, you know, a filing cabinet. It could be, it could be anything, but it's one place where you know all of your important documents are going to be. This is really important if you run your own business to keep a spot where you keep all of that stuff that you just accumulate throughout the year, receipts and invoices and contracts and all of this stuff, right? And then knowing your numbers. So where are you spending your cash each month is probably the most important tip I can ever give to you. Because knowing where you're spending your money each month gives you power and control over your bank account. It allows you to be able to make changes where you need to make changes and then have it be so impactful in your bank account, right? And then last is just, you know, what changes do you need to make next year? Like, what are you not happy with? What isn't working? What do you need to tweak? You know, figure that out. Maybe a little bit ahead of time. Maybe inspire yourself to like get a jump start. you know? I think this is a this is a great time to start thinking about these smart money moves to think about like what isn't working, what is working, and then you know what are the little just sort of tweaks and changes that you need to make. Don't make all this stuff all at once. Oh my gosh, you will you will hate me. <laughs> you will um yes, that's the best word. You will absolutely hate me. You know, just pick pick one spot here you know, make a little change there. Okay. You've done that check. Okay. Then maybe go in a little, a little other place because this stuff is already stressful. This stuff is already uh, frustrating. You know, no matter where we are in life, whether we are just starting out or we're more established, you know, thinking about money is just not an easy thing. So give yourself a little grace, give yourself a little room to make a mistake, uh, but start thinking about these smart money moves to make. As always, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Shauna Game. And if you love this podcast, do me a favor, share it with your friends, shout it out on social media, and head on over to the link in the show notes and leave us a review. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Savings are in full bloom at Tanger Outlets. Get up to an extra 25% off on top of everyday savings during Tanger Style, our biggest sale of the season. Find amazing value on your favorite brands. Visit Tanger.com. 